I'm talking today with Dr. Mujik al Maderis, author of Walking Free, his amazing memoir, which has just been published. Mujik, why did you decide to write your story? Um, the reason I uh, decided to write my story is um, that I went through an ordeal, I think. Yes. Um, um, I escaped um, um, a horrible regime, which is Saddam Hussein's, um, um, and um, I managed to get to, into Australia seeking asylum and hoping for a better uh, life. And um, uh, I lived 10 months inside a detention yes. center and um, it was very harsh. Um, and um, I thought that um, there is a lot to tell, basically. Um, the change of events in Iraq is important. Um, yeah. The perception of the Western society toward Iraq is um, very um, uh, wrong. Oh, it's and, biased. Uh, a lot it of really? it is biased. Mm. Um, so I thought that um, uh, it's a good opportunity that I can express my personal experience and, um, and put it in a book. Uh, now, you came from a, p a privileged background. Uh, tell me about your family. Uh, look, I, I was born as a <clears throat> the only child to um, um, a well-off family um, from the father's side. My mum, on the other hand, come from a working class family. She was one of ten and um, her father was a car dealer and she, he lost his life uh, at an early uh, age and then she had to quit her law school uh, studies and then took teaching in order to raise up her brothers and sisters. Um, um, and then she ended up marrying my father. My father, on the other hand, uh, was the head of the Supreme Court when Iraq was a kingdom. And um, his brother, who's my uncle, was a prime minister. Yes. And um, their father was, well, which is my grandfather, was the head of the Islamic faith, basically, or at least the Sunni faith in Iraq. So, um, and um, they <coughs> are regarded as a blue-blooded, if you yeah, absolutely if the world, yes, uh, if the word. Uh, is correct. Um, so um, uh, these two families joined together, and, um, and by marrying my mum to my dad, and um, and then I I came uh, as a result. Uh, my father was always uh, an agnostic, if not an atheist, uh, though he was supposed to follow his father yes. and take over the Islamic uh, faith, basically. Yes. Um, and he went and did his studies, uh, and he got. Uh, the highest degree in religion and then he came back and decided uh, to practice law basically rather than um, teach religion uh, or take a position, uh, a religious position. Um, and I followed him uh, through. My mum was a Muslim yes. and um, she always tried to teach me um, about the faith in Islam and um, uh, my father never uh, forced me in any way or form. No. I ended up studying religions and then I chose to follow my father's path. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. now, now you decided to become a doctor. Um, uh, what made you decide that that uh, medicine was the way you wanted to go, not law? Um, I think um, the best way to give back and to help people is by doing medicine. Um, medicine is one of the most noble uh, Causes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, professions yes. on earth where it, it is it is very special in one way that um, um, it carries a huge responsibility on the person that's uh, performing it. At the same time, uh, you get involved with um, the deepest part of human being, and um, and and, um, and you can make a difference. So, what could you tell us about that fateful night in nineteen ninety nine when uh, you were in a surgery and um, ready with with your colleagues to perform operations that day that was scheduled? Well, look, um, um, my life was normal in, in Iraq, as normal as it can be in a war-torn country. Um, I was um, going to my day-to-day -day work and, um, as a resident in, in Baghdad University Hospital and uh, all of a sudden three busloads of army deserters stopped and um, the um, Republican guards um, uh, ordered um, uh, the the team to abandon the elective surgeries and um, start uh, uh, performing operations, uh, basically mutilation on these people uh, by taking their earlobes off. 
The head of the department refused to do so and he was dragged outside to the car park and a bullet was put to his head. Horrific. And um, then they yes. turned to the rest of the team and they said, ladies and gentlemen, now we um, uh, attracted your attention. Anyone share this guy's view, come forward, otherwise proceed. So um, memories came uh, in front of me straight away of uh, my next door neighbor where he, he was an army deserter and he was dragged outside his house uh, by the Republican or by the Ba'ath Party and they took him to the headquarters in the area. And two days later they uh, uh, shot him, um, they executed him with a fire squad, firing squad in front of his family and the family were forced to pay uh, for the bullets that uh, shot him and Goodness. he wasn't given a, a, the right to have a funeral um, and uh, they had to um, bury him in a shameful manner. So um, I thought, uh, do I object and I end up um, being killed? Uh, do I obey and I violate the, the, s the simplest principles that any doctor um, have? Um, like we have an oath from the Hippocrates. Yes, so then it would be on your conscience for the rest of your life. That's right. Or do I become a coward and uh, escape and tell the story later? So I chose to become a coward. Yes, and um, that. The, the, uh, in the book, your, your, um, uh, when, when you escaped and, and, and got into the, the, um, the women's change rooms and locked yourself in, um, that must have, those hours must have been endless. They were one of the longest hours oh, in my whole life. It would have been. Oh. Um, now, you, your story is more powerful because you, give, you, you tell the story without being emotional and, and you've got every right to be emotional. But it's it's uh, I found it more powerful in the way you told it. Now the boat trip um, from uh, from Indonesia it was an example of this. Uh, it must have been horrendous. Can I mean it was thirty six hours? It was yes. thirty six hours. Relatively, it was a very short journey because we were directly going to uh, through deep waters uh, to Christmas Island. The skipper said that if you go straight, you will hit Christmas Island in 30 to 36 hours if uh, that's when we reach international waters um, and if you miss Christmas Island you will hit the mainland maybe a couple of weeks and then if you miss the mainland then oh. good luck yes. you'll end up with penguins yes. uh, basically so um, we managed to get to Christmas Island um, on, by the way the skipper jumped into a dinghy to yes. a frigate and he went back to the mainland and we were left with um, two teenagers um, which I believe they were his uh, sons um, so uh, it, it was a flimsy boat, uh, yes. it was a fishing boat. And you uh, thought there was only going to be 50 one. people on and there was... What, and we were 165 oh, people God. crammed like <laughs> sardines, there was no space to sit down. Um, eventually, um, with the exception of 10 of us, um, the rest of people were lying on each other um, in vomit and urine mm. uh, because um, of the seasickness. Um, and um, but myself and a few others uh, managed to uh, uh, continue uh, going because we were too busy trying to put uh, drips and give yes. them fluids and resuscitate them. So um, we were very busy. Um, I mean, I didn't have any time to, to get a well fluid or, yes. or dwell on. Yeah. And um, it was very rough waters and um, it was rainy and most of the time. Gosh. Um, but eventually, and, and every single person who got on this boat uh, were well aware that 50-50 chance of dying, especially that we knew that a um, couple of days late, uh, earlier uh, or so, uh, another boat sank. Uh, and the history of uh, boats yes. sinking in the sea is, is very evident. Mm. And, and um, no one uh, is, um, is hiding away from that fact that um, they may end up uh, dying. Um, so uh, I find it a bit ridiculous that some people think that uh, people take it lightly by coming on a boat. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, your time in the Curtin Detention Centre absolutely appalled me. What what you had to, to put up with and to be known as a number is so emotionally degrading. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I spent 10 months in detention centre. Um, when we got to Christmas Island, Christmas Island was not... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, a detention centre no. back then. It was um, um, an island that was run by the federal police and um, we had the nicest uh, receiving uh, from the federal police. It was very pleasant and we thought that this is marvellous. 
and then um, the reality came uh, when we were uh, flown to Christmas Island and the minute we got to that detention center it was horrible we were tagged with numbers um, mm. and that was the last time I was called by my name and from there on for 10 months I was called my name too in a very unhumane uh, uh, fashion and um, um, to summarize the detention center it was hell on earth mm. basically um, it was very horrible uh, don't get me wrong um, I'm not against uh, mandatory detention. Um, I think people um, need to be detained when they come into uh, Australia because we have to uh, make sure that people don't carry diseases or, and mm. they're not terrorists and we have to make sure that they are genuine refugees. However, the process uh, can be much more humane yeah. and, and the way can... we were treated was Poor. far away oh. from being humane. But the, the other thing too is, is if if um, people that are in detention are given work to, to do to occupy themselves. Well, I mean, that's 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 right, and um, um, I was very strong in my opinion about uh, number one that we spent, for example, uh, from the eighth of November, uh, nineteen ninety nine, till sometime in May. That was the first time when anyone asked me what was your, what was my name, and um, I spent all that all these months. Um, spending taxpayers' money without doing anything, and that's really ridiculous. Yes. Um, uh, but what really appalls me is that um, the treatment of children. And um, schooling. And nice. um, no one on earth has the right to deprive a child from education, no matter who, no. who he is. No. Um, uh, children has the right to be educated, and um, incarcerating children in this manner is inhumane. Absolutely. And your journey from uh, Curtin, that was in August 2000, was just before the Olympic Games, wasn't Correct. it? Correct. Um, to, to today, is sort of, it, to me, is mind-boggling. The years of study that you did, the hard work in, in different hospitals around Australia, um, and then to become a, pi a pioneering surgeon in you know, osteointegration. Correct. Uh, which is titanium rods, isn't it, into That's the right. bone? Could That's you, right. That's right. Talk about that? Well, basically, osteo integration means um, the bone come in one piece with a metal. And um, uh, and the whole idea comes from tooth implants, basically, yes. in the 60s, uh, where uh, Per Ingevar, Brunnemark, uh, by accident, discovered that um, when he inserted titanium rod into a, a, a rabbit tibia, uh, the uh, the bone integrate with the metal. and. Um, uh, that philosophy was taken to uh, treating uh, uh, tooth loss and then was taken to treating amputees and now we managed to uh, get amputees uh, being able to uh, walk again with a skeletally anchored uh, robots basically. Mm -hmm. um, and that basically um, uh, overcome a lot of hurdles that amputees uh, face on a day to day basis by using uh, traditional old-fashioned archaic socket prosthesis. Yes. Now, I mean, your reflections in the last pages of your, your book, Walking Free, on this sort of attitude that people have of uh, asylum seekers, I think should be compulsory reading for all Australians, and especially for those <laughs> working... Oh, no, I know. Yeah. Especially <laughs> those working in detention centres, because mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe, reading your book, that people working in detention centres aren't... Uh, the, the training they get is is appalling. I well, mean, look look at the, the story about the ham sandwiches. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't in Curtin, but yeah, that just. I, I mean, look, um, it's back to the basic principle: education, education, education. Yes. Education is a solution for all problems on earth. Yes. If everybody is educated, there will be no wars. There will be no problems. But that's the that's the problem that we have. A lot of people that um, are. Um, yeah, in power and in positions are not educated. Look what's happening now in the rest of the world. Yes, okay, yeah. It's all due to lack of education. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming into Boffins today and thank Thanks. you for coming to Australia. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Thank you.